This training series will demonstrate how the software can be used to display 3D volume renderings, create cross sections, trace nerves, place virtual implants and restore them, print images, save images, and many more functions. When a patient scan is open, you will begin in the Section View tab. This tab will be a good place to begin our discovery of the software and is the subject of this tutorial. Before we begin, I would like to change the way that the screen is presented. The view I'm currently defaulted to is called Black and White. Let's click on the Menu Bar File tab, then click Preferences. In the pop-up window, let's change to the Classic view. We will need to reload the scan for a change to take place. After that, whenever a scan is opened, it will default to the Classic view. While this is my preference, yours may very well be Black and White. The screen layout of Section View, as well as that of the other View tabs, will have a Menu Bar, Toolbar, View Tabs, Control Panel, and a Rendering Window. All but the Menu Bar and the View Tabs will change depending upon the View Tab selected. View Tabs allow you to perform specific tasks or look at specific areas of interest. For example, the Section View tab gives you the ability to view orthogonal planes, create custom sections for 2D visualization, and to make distance measurement within the cone beam computed tomographic volume, or CBCT volume, if you wish, or within the airway. The section view rendering window shows the patient in three-dimensionally reconstructed views and allows you to explore the internal structures and never-before-seen views of the patients. These reconstructed volumetric data sets of the patient scan are displayed in three viewing windows, the axial, coronal, and sagittal, as multiplanar reconstructions of the image structures. The top left viewing window is looking up from the bottom of the patient's head at a specified thin slice of the anatomy. The orientation of the patient is shown on the screen with the patient's right side on the left-hand side of the viewing window and the patient's left side on the right side of the window. In the window just below the axial view, we see the patient's coronal view with slices stacked anterior to posterior. In the window at the top right is the sagittal or lateral view of the patient with slices stacked vertically right to left. Before we begin our navigations through these sections, let's talk a little bit about patient positioning. While your practice was taught the importance of patient setup when you had your initial training, things can go wrong. The operator may have positioned the patient incorrectly or there may have been some anatomical limitation that prevented correct positioning. Additionally, the patient may have moved after setup and before the scan was taken. Regardless of the cause, the toolbar reorientation function provides you a way to reorient a volume through each orthogonal view, sagittal, coronal, and axial, before you begin case planning. Let's click on the reorientation icon to activate it, then click on an arrow, and while keeping the button depressed, drag the mouse to achieve the desired orientation. Ideally, there would be no side-to-side -side tilt and the occlusal plane would be parallel. After changes are made, click on the reorientation icon again to lock in the changes. No changes will be made to the original DICOM scan data. If you click the icon again, you can adjust the volume's orientation or reset it to the original positioning. Measurement errors in cross-sectional slices can occur with improper patient positioning. This can be especially problematic when determining the length of an implant that would border the sinus cavity or the inferior alveolar nerve. Now let's navigate through these slice sections. There are three ways in which we may do this. Move the mouse cursor to the desired plane and use the scroll wheel to move one section at a time as you advance through the data slices. You may also grab one of the cursor lines by left mouse clicking on it and while holding down the mouse's left button, move the mouse until you arrive at the desired location within the corresponding orthogonal image. Green lines move through the sagittal slices from left to right. Blue lines move through the coronal slices from anterior to posterior. The red lines move through the axial slices inferiorly to superiorly. Lastly, you may place the mouse pointer at the intersection of the cursor lines 
and while depressing the left mouse button and holding it down, move your mouse to an anatomical location of interest. Two corresponding orthogonal views of the selected region will automatically appear in the associated view windows. You may find that you need to zoom in on an image for greater visibility. This can be done in two ways. First, move the mouse cursor to the desired image, depress the control keyboard key and the left mouse button, and move your mouse upwards. Move the mouse toward the bottom of the screen to zoom out. To quickly revert to the default view, click the Reset View icon on the toolbar. You will see that a description of the toolbar icons will appear if you hover over them with your mouse pointer. The second way to increase the size of the image is to double mouse click on it. Use the aforementioned directions to zoom in and zoom out further. To return to the original view, double mouse click on the image again. You may want to move the image on the screen or pan the image. To do so, move your mouse cursor to an image, depress the shift keyboard key and the left mouse button, and move your mouse. As with the zoom feature, you may click the toolbar's reset view to revert back to the default position. To change the brightness and or contrast of the image, depress the left mouse button and move your mouse up or down for brightness and left to right for contrast. This can be done by using the view control tools in the control panel as well. This concludes a brief introduction to the section view tab. Please join us for the next video which will build upon the information that was covered in this tutorial. If you have any unanswered questions, or if you would like additional information, consult the InVivo Reference Manual. If you do not have a copy of the manual, or still have questions, contact Cavo Dental Imaging Technical Support by calling 866-528-6537.